When you leave today's video, every single one of you is going to have a pathway to be able to move your body in a way where you can start from a static address position and you can go through the load processes and the unload processes and get your downswing started the correct way without creating some of those catastrophic faults. Every single one of you is gonna be able to do that movement from beginning to end. Now, inside of this video is going to be a lot of details, but these details are gonna get boiled down into some really simple little focus points that are gonna make it easier for you to be able to create movement. And a lot of this is gonna be done through what you're feeling through your feet and a little visual of where your hips are in space. If you follow this plan, you're going to be able to move very dynamically very athletically, and you're gonna be able to start laying down the foundation for the rest of your golfing lives. Now, as you start to go forward in this journey, remember this, is that I don't want this movement to be a very technically minded movement. For those of you that are just joining us on this channel or joining us on the website, you know that in the adaptive swing that I teach, we have three very important segments of the golf swing that we like to basically describe where your speed and where your sequence is all about. If you think about this section that's from my belt line down, this is your speed zone. This is where we want the golf club moving its fastest and the body moving its slowest. And that midsection between chest tight to chest tight down to the start of the speed zone is what we call our acceleration zone. This is where we really start to get on the gas. This is where the hands and arms are going really, really quickly in the swing. And then that top piece, that final piece is basically what we're gonna be working on today, that slow zone. That slow zone is where we start to change the direction of the golf swing. This is where we start to get things set up for success in the downswing. And a lot of you at home start to try to rush through this position and that's what gets you into trouble in the first place. Think about the golf swing as being fast, but fast in the right spots. If you can grab a hold of that sort of analogy, then it makes the whole process of building your golf swing a whole lot easier over the long haul. Now, I get this question a lot. Should I, in my golf swing, when I make my takeaway in my backswing, have my lead heel up off the ground. And the same thing in the downswing. Should I have my trail heel up off the ground at the point of contact? My answer back to that is, of course. That's okay if you need that help to be able to create movement. Think about what lifting your heels up really does in your golf swing. So if you were to stand up vertically and you were just to lift your lead heel up, lift your trail heel up, and not thinking about a golf swing at all, but you were just do this back and forth, you can see that I create a substantial amount of horizontal movement. And what it also does is it helps you when you start to stay a little bit more centered, free up your hips to allow them to rotate. We want the hips to rotate somewhere between 35 and 45 degrees on both sides of the golf ball. 35 to 45 degrees closed to 35 to 45 degrees open. That's roughly 90 degrees of movement from a neutral pelvic position at a dress. That's a lot of movement. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna help you find that blend and we're gonna do that by feeling the pressure through our feet and feeling what it's like to rotate your hips back into the depth dimension of the swing. Now, when you hear me say that depth dimension word, I know a lot of you get confused by this, but a good visual for you a lot at home is if you were to set up at a dress and you draw a line straight up from the center of my ankle up the outside of my body from a down the line perspective, everything behind that line is going to be considered your depth dimension. A lot of times what people do is they set up with their weight too far forward in their feet, or they have improper balance, or they have very limited mobility in their hips, and they'll start to try to rotate their hips, but their hips never actually rotate properly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna think about getting our right hip socket or our trail hip socket rotated back into the depth dimension of the swing. Now, when we do that, we're gonna be focusing in on increasing the pressure upwards of 90% at first. Now, I know a lot of you at home may feel like that's just way too much, but remember, we're starting with baseline movement. In order for you to be able to get movement back in the other direction, you need to feel a significant change in pressure through your feet in order to be able to start giving yourself something to move off of. So the first part of this drill, what I want you to do is I want you to have a golf ball down on the ground and I want you to have it positioned off of your lead ear or off of the logo on your chest. Okay, this is for a stock ball position for stock shots. Okay, we're gonna be in our normal setup here, so we wanna make sure our setup is good, and we're gonna make sure that we feel 50-50 at address. Now, the big key to your success with using your lower body is not to feel like you're stuck in the ground, but to feel like you have some freedom of movement. So you wanna be able to feel a little bit of shuffling around from your lower half. You don't wanna feel frozen. So I want you to feel like you can kind of move your feet around, and I want you to feel, as you're doing this, that a bulk of your pressure is going to be positioned more or less underneath your ankle joints. 
Now, if you were to take your arms and cross them over your shoulders, what I want you to do is I want you to start to push down in your trail ankle. So if you have 50-50 at address, I want you to feel somewhere about 70 to 80%. You're gonna notice that my head is moving off the ball. Now, as I start to make that pressure onto my trail ankle, I want you to think about that line that's coming up the side of your body, and I want you to pull your right hip back into the depth dimension of the swing, and I want you to turn your body simultaneously. And what you should feel is that your foot is now 80% or 90% of your weight is now parked underneath your ankle. That body turn and that hip rotation should feel like it's screwing your foot into the ground. Now, a lot of times I get people that are worried about the weight getting to the outside part of their foot and they start to really try to keep the weight to the inside portion of the foot. That's not necessarily what I would consider a good safe move on the body. It's not gonna allow you to shift and rotate the hips properly. So what you wanna remember is, is that at your address position, your stance width should be a fraction wider than the width of your pelvis. And so because your legs are coming off of your pelvis at a tilt here, your weight should be more to the interior part of your feet. Now, as you start to shift, your foot should feel like it flattens to the ground. Very key piece here. You don't want to get on the outside part of the foot during any part of the load and rotational process of the golf swing. So if you notice that your weight is getting on the outside part from all that horizontal movement, then you're going to want to feel more rotational movement. If you feel like your weight's getting on the outside part of the foot because you rotated too much, then you want to feel a little bit more pressure increase to that side by feeling more horizontal movement. That's the balancing act that exists in this stuff, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do 20 reps at first where we work on pushing down in the trail ankle, pulling the trail hip back into depth simultaneously, and turning our, our body as much as we possibly can. I like to feel like you're turning your rib cage as like the source of your body rotation. So we're gonna do 20 reps, good setup position. Okay, we're gonna be shuffling our feet a little bit, so we're going back and forth between 50-50. The first move is going to be press down in the trail ankle, even if you're shifting a little bit too far. Okay, pull the trail hip back into depth, and turn your rib cage as much as you possibly can. Push down, pull the hip back, turn. You should feel like your ankle is getting screwed into the ground as your body turns over onto that trail side. So it's 80 to 90%. Turn my hips. So I'm pulling that right hip back behind the depth line. Now we're gonna start the hard stuff. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be working into the transition, getting our weight moved from the trail side of our body over to the lead side of our body. What we're gonna look for as an end result here is we want about 90% or 80 to 90% of our weight underneath our trail foot to now turn into about 80% of your weight underneath your lead foot. Your hips are gonna come back from a closed position of 35 to 45 degrees to a square position. Now I say square because next week I'm gonna teach you how to add in the post up and the stability as you start to let the club move through the hitting area that's gonna help bring this whole thing together. So remember, the goal is, is to get 90% of your weight from your trail foot over to 80% under your lead foot. Now, to make this whole process a whole lot easier on you, what I want you to remember is, is that when you load it into your trail side, your trail hip has now moved back into the depth dimension of the swing. If you were to think about keeping your trail hip back there, okay, not letting it start to move forward, and you were to start thinking about, I'm gonna get my pressure over to my lead foot, and I'm gonna think about 80 to 90%, and you focus on where it lands, it's going to make the whole process of what actually is gonna be taking place from your lead leg and your lead hip a whole lot easier to manage. I want you to think about this for a second. If you were to pitch a baseball and you stood on your back leg and you lift your lead leg and you start to stride towards home plate, your left leg begins to externally rotate towards the target. This is what we call internal femur rotation. Now, thinking about internal femur rotation and also horizontal movement at the same time is a lot to think about. But think about what I've been telling you since the start of this video is our job is to think about the pressure through our feet. And if you think about where the weight lands in the foot, then that's gonna make the hips actually work dynamically and work for you. Take a ride with me for a second. From this position, if I rotate and 
load into my trail side. If I allow my weight, when I start to shift onto my lead side, to go to the forward part of my foot, up here in the ball of my foot or my toes, then my pelvis is not actually unwinding. My hips are doing what we call a closed hip slide. This is a very common move that a lot of you battle with. So to offset that, if I think about my weight moving now underneath my lead ankle joint, as I start to allow my whole body to fall onto my lead leg, you've now just made the hardest move in the golf swing a whole lot simpler. Think about that word fall. Now, for years, we've talked about different ways to get your weight moving onto your lead side. One of the big things that gets people into trouble is that they get onto this trail side and then they just start pushing really hard. That push movement is what gets you into extension. It gets you out past neutral and it causes you to spin out. I don't want you to think about pushing off that trail leg. I want you to think about falling off of that trail leg. If you think about falling off of that trail leg and getting your weight to land underneath your ankle joint, your hips are gonna move in a perfect blend of horizontal and rotational movement. So how I want you to do this is I want you to go ahead and take your setup. I want you to make that same pressure shift onto your trail side, pull your hip back into depth, and I want you to keep that trail hip back into depth, and I want you just to start falling onto your lead side while you hold that trail hip back. What you're gonna notice is, is that my hips are still a little bit closed here. Okay, you can see that my hips are closed maybe 10 degrees now, but I can feel a lot of my pressure on my lead foot. I can see that my upper body has gone a little bit too far as well. I'm out in front of where I started at a dress. But that feel is what I want you to grab a hold of. We're gonna make it a lot easier for you to manage here in just a second. So let me show you how to bring this together. So the first thing that we wanna do is think about the pressure trace, the pressure moving under my trail foot and my hip rotating back into depth. I'm gonna keep this trail hip back into depth, okay? And now I'm gonna take 80 to 90% of my weight, let's call it 80, and park it underneath my lead ankle. That's forcing the hips to start to actually open back up a little bit. Now, they're not fully back to square, and the reason for that is, is because I'm restricting my trail side so much. Now, if I do that, same movement, and I allow my trail hip to come back to the starting point, now I've just made that whole movement come to light. And what you're gonna look for here as your finished position is you want 80 to 90% of your weight parked underneath your lead ankle. Your lead hip socket and your lead knee and your lead ankle should form a straight line with one another. And if you look at the outer portion of my back when I make this movement, you should see that it forms a fairly straight line. It's not big tilted way, right? And the reason for that is, is that all of that axis tilt or that spine tilt and your shoulders unwinding is what's making it harder for you to transfer real, real weight. When you watch the golf swing, we call it recentering, which is my least favorite term in the world of golf instruction, is that you're gonna notice that the center of the pelvis and the body move a substantial amount in front of where it was at a dress. A substantial amount, not a small amount, a substantial amount. So you see it move a little bit off the ball and a giant amount in front. That's what gets you transferred into your lead side, gets you in position to be able to control the low point but also makes your golf swing a whole lot more efficient. So think about what I'm saying to you. You're gonna use your feet and the visuals of the depth as a way to be able to get your hips to move dynamically. Pretty crazy, right? So now do this with me. Stand up at home and do 10 reps where you're gonna go ahead and press down in your trail ankle, okay? Pull the hip back into depth, keep your hip back into depth and start falling onto your lead ankle where you have 80 to 90% of your weight. So you're gonna see that your head and everything comes back out in front of the golf ball. You got way too much weight over here. I get it. But now do some reps where you allow your trail hip to start to move back towards its original position. Now what you're gonna see is that, oh gosh, I'm actually starting to sit down. I've kind of made that little initial squat that you see all the playing professionals do. And as I start to let that trail hip come forward, now it's easier to balance out that horizontal movement. You're gonna use the golf ball as your reference point when you start picking up the pace here. Your head in the golf swing should move off the ball a small amount. In transition, when you do it right, it's gonna move a quite a bit in front of it, right? But to balance that out and not let it move in front of it, you need to allow the horizontal movement to have some offset to it, allowing the hips to rotate. So you're holding it in place to get the weight shifted. You're allowing the hip to come back to finish off the dynamic movement there, to get it into the right spot. Now as you start to go and get more and more reps under your belt and you start to do this with some fluidity, then we wanna bring the arms and the golf club back to the mix. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I want you to practice this now. 
Okay, so here we go. So pressure, pull the right hip back, keep the right hip back. Okay, that's a good rep. So 80 to 90% of your weight underneath your lead ankle with keeping your trail hip back. So you can see it's forcing this lead leg to start to externally rotate just by getting my weight to go back towards my lead ankle, my lead heel area. Okay, 10 reps done. Let's do 10 reps now where the trail hip starts to come forward as I start to make my movement back onto my lead side to dial this in. Now the key or the focus point here is, remember, 80% now underneath your lead ankle, hips back to square. Your head position should be back to originally where it started out of dress. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so hips are square, 80% of my weight under my lead ankle. Okay, I've got my head back in its original position. Okay, as you start doing these reps, you can do them in fluidity. So hold that right hip back as you start to fall, let the trail hip come forward. As you start to get better and better with this, you're not gonna have to hold that trail hip back as you start making your move onto your lead side because now you know that as you start to get your weight moving onto your lead foot, you're not pushing off of that leg and you're not running yourself into extension. You can kind of see the method to the madness here. Now, in this final step of the drill, this is where we're gonna bring the golf club back in the mix. The focus points are gonna remain the same, but what I want you to remember is, is that in that top part of the golf swing, the slow section, this is where all the magic needs to start happening. So when your hands and your arms get above the acceleration zone into the slow zone is when you need to start feeling the pressure move off of the trail side onto the lead side. And you need to do that with some fluidity, right? You need to do it in a way that it feels like a real golf swing. Remember what the focus points are. 90% of your weight underneath your trail ankle, hips turn 35 to 45 degrees. When you get done on your lead side, it should be 80%, maybe a little bit more underneath your lead ankle with your hips back to a square position. When you do this movement at high rates of speed, what we'll typically see is that your lead arm is gonna be right around parallel to the ground after transition's complete. For the purposes of this drill, if your arms drop down a little bit lower than that to where your hands are kind of at belt height, that's totally fine. Let your arms just kind of settle down and in. That's the whole purpose of the drill, is not to worry about where the hands and arms in the club are, but to worry about getting the, the weight moving through the feet and doing it athletically and dynamically. So let's go ahead and start the practice program with the golf club now. Remember what the goal is, is to 90%, let the hips rotate. Okay, kind of go through it in your brain. Okay, we're gonna do some slow swings here at first and then we'll start picking up the pace. Okay, check. Do I feel 80 to 90% of my weight underneath my lead ankle? Yep, are my hips and knees close to a square position or fully square? You betcha. Do I feel like my arms have just kind of dropped down off my shoulders? You betcha. Okay, that's one rep. So I really love the holding of the trail hip back into depth while I start the processes of falling. And the reason why I love that is because when I've given it to my students online or in person, I see them make the initial move onto the lead side without starting the processes of moving into extension. When you start the processes of moving into extension, you're not gonna stop. That's the whole key to this, is that by holding it back there and allowing the weight to start to transfer, you're now teaching your body how to move dynamically without having to think about all of the moving parts. So over the next seven days, seven to 10 days, I'll give you a little bit of grace period here. I want you to try to knock out somewhere between a 700 to a thousand total reps. Your reps, your rep strategy should start out just like I did here, arms across the shoulders, 10 to 15 reps where you're just working on the load process, 10 to 15 reps where you're working on unload, blending those two things together. And then as you start to get proficient with those movements, bring the golf club back in. Use that rest of your time or your practice session, the rest of the reps you're gonna to try to get done as a way to be able to make it real movement. If you notice that these movements start to break down and they're not looking exactly the way that you want them to look on camera,
then strip it back down, go back through the processes. You're gonna find over the next seven days, if you're doing a little bit each day, that by day seven, this becomes much easier. And when we start adding in the stuff that we're gonna be doing next week, the sky's the limit, I promise you. When you start learning how to get through that position and start transferring energy and speed into the club head and into the golf ball, but doing it where you're not disrupting the stability in the club face, then a lot of you are gonna be much happier golfers when it's all said and done. Good luck, we'll see you in next week's video.